Hey, what's up? Ken from Paul Beach Dino here. We've got two great tech tips for you today. The big one is wide bands and how pressure in the exhaust affects the readings. This can come into play with catalytic converters or turbo cars with bad placement, restrictive mufflers, anything like that. But first, I'm going to show you guys a real quick overview of force scan. Very, very simple. For those of you guys that know this, you can skip ahead. But this is really important. A lot of the newer vehicles, tire size and stuff like that is not stored in the PCM anymore where we can simply fix it with a tune. Forescan is a great tool for that, plus a whole lot more. Let me show you. So Forescan is it's very similar to what, you know, a lot of the features you might get with the Ford uh, factory software. Um, first, you connect to the vehicle. I believe Forescan.org is where you can get the software. And then you can also, uh, get a simple adapter. I'm using a really cheap one from Amazon on this car just to show you it works. The very first thing when you first connect to the vehicle, it's going to go through and check for every single module in the car, check uh, codes and all that the very first time. The next time we hook to this vehicle, it's already going to know what modules are in the vehicle so it does. you don't have to do this every time. So long as you save the profile, which I'll show you how to do that, it's obvious uh, as soon as this is done. So. Real quick, while it's doing this, let's talk about um, what features you get. You've got DCTs, that's engine codes, but the nice thing about this is a lot of tuning um, hardware, you can't check every single module, so you wind up not being able to clear codes in your transmission or other modules. You can do that in every module here, and that's why it's checking all the modules. Uh, PID data. You can do a data log. Okay, real quick right here, it's asking me if I want to save this profile. So the next time we hook to the vehicle, it doesn't have to do that whole routine. I'm gonna say yes. Now that's saved. So now I can go in to DCTs and look at codes. Now this car is in the middle of being built. It's a GT500. It has all sorts of codes from things being unplugged, so we're not gonna worry about that. You can go in here, there's an oscilloscope and a dashboard, and uh, right here is the P or PCM. You can hook up to any one of these modules and then add, um, different things that you can log here. You can log uh, whatever you want. Seat height, motor down. I mean, all sorts of things that are really neat. Um, right here are all sorts of tests that you might get. Uh, you might be able to uh, duplicate things that they can do at the dealer. Um, service functions, that's another one. You can do the misfile monitor. Uh, all sorts of training um, for this vehicle, for instance, uh, somewhere here in one of the suspension modules, you can train the right height sensors to make sure those are correct. Uh, but what we're going to go into is configuration and programming. And then you have the body control module, which is where the tire size is held, and that's what we're going to show you today. So there's two different body control modules. The first one, you, you select that, and then you hit play going to warn you not to change anything you don't know what it is now what that's going to bring up is this stuff here for the most part you don't have to mess with this when a vehicle is new this may be the only way to change it so when the GT500 first came out all of these addresses had to get figured out on what they are the nice thing is is force scan also gives you a second one there and what it's going to do is it's a template that's going to interpret what all those values are and what they're for and make it a much easier to use uh, interface with text, right? So here you go. Here's all the things that you can change in here. Now, I really encourage you to go through the four scan tutorial and follow all their instructions, which includes doing a backup before you touch anything because you can mess things up. Uh, so what we're gonna look at is tire size. So tire circumference is 2132 that is in uh, millimeters now you can use an online calculator so if we go here uh, tire size tire uh, what is that tire size dot com 315 30 20 which is the factory tire you hit calculate and then down here on the bottom you have an option of inches or millimeters so that says 2189. If we go back here, it's 2132. In general, Ford uses about a percent or so less than the calculated value as the value in here. 
So that's what we normally do here at Palm Beach Dino. Probably a good idea to do. So let's say you're gonna put on a 305, 45, 18 tire. <clears throat> that's $22.99. So 22.99 times 0.99, 22.76. So that's the wrong button. So you go in here, double click on this, 22.76. Click the check mark. It's still not done yet. You have to hit right. So you hit right down here at the bottom, and then hit the check box. And that's it. It tells you to cycle the key, hit OK, and you're done. Now, you also would be a good idea to hit stop down here. I don't believe anything would happen if you don't, but that's going to officially disconnect the car, and then you're good to go. So I really encourage you guys to get Forescan, um, learn it. You can use it for tire size, all sorts of things, uh, procedures, check engine codes, things like that, and it will really help you out with the vehicle. Anyway, let's get to the wide bands. All right, before we talk about the wide bands, I want to update you guys on 860 Street Race at the NMRA. We have an awesome three-person team, Casey Shotwell, Bo Webb, and Chris Tino. Casey Shotwell is leading the points. Bo has made a final already. And Chris, first time out at this recent race with his turbo car on a Holly. We're tuning that too. Did awesome. I think he qualified third. Check it out. Let's talk about wide bands. Everybody's super excited. You know, since 2011, the Coyote has wide bands. Most Fords have wide bands now, and that is great news. Uh, but it does have some pitfalls, which is what happens when you get pressure in your exhaust. Uh, this is easy to display on a turbo car, and we're gonna, that's what we're gonna show you. But this can also happen when your uh, catalytic converters get clogged. Wide bands are not meant to measure under pressure unless they're compensated for that and there are some uh, lab quality units that have a pressure sensor uh, to uh, compensate for that but in general a normal wideband does not and that is why you never want to have a wideband before the turbo on a Ford 
Now, there are some cars that were that way or built that way. A lot of uh, custom kits go that way at first, not knowing this car is one of them. And the sensor on the driver's side is still there, but it's a single turbo car. So we just moved the passenger side after the turbo. So that one is after the turbo, no pressure. And the one on the left side, which is bank two, is on the pressure side of the turbo. Right now, we don't have pressure readings. Uh, we may do a follow-up video to give you some more data, but I wanna show you how significantly different the air fuel reading can be in this situation. So, if we look at the log here, I'm gonna zoom in, and this is on a dyno pull. So, right here, as soon as we get into it, and it starts seeing some pressure, which is right around four to 5,000 RPM, you can see uh, on the lower right here is bank two. That's the short-term fuel trim, and this is bank one. So this is the correct one on the left. The same thing with the air fuel up here. And the one on the right is on the pressure side. As we scan through the graph, look at the right side, bank two. At the very top, it gets all the way up at 7,200 RPM, it's pulling 24% of fuel and it's still 0.71 Lambda. We're targeting 0.79, I believe on this car, as you can see, as I drag through it, bank one is pretty close. It's bouncing around, there's 4%, it's a few percent. The right side is showing that it's excessively rich and pulling 24%, which we would expect because we know there's pressure in this exhaust. So. What happens if your catalytic converters get clogged? It's gonna look like the one on the right. You're gonna think the car's running rich. It's gonna begin to pull fuel and pull fuel and pull fuel until guess what? Pop. So that is how a catalytic converter being clogged will help pop your motor. People think it's the restriction, and yes, it's definitely related to the restriction, but it also is going to continue to pull fuel as the pressure goes up. This is, of course, an, uh, you know, an extreme example. This car is running 19 pounds of boost. There's probably anywhere between 20 and 30 plus pounds in that side, pulling 25% and still being rich. But with a clogged catalytic converter, you might build up a PSI or two. Who knows? Maybe we'll do a follow-up video on that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Share it with your friends, and we'll see you on the next one.